to give you a little preview. It goes all the way up to a point and then all the way down on my easel. So it is super big. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to, it's green already because, thanks guys, you are so sweet. It's green because I thought we were, do, I was doing Christmas trees in November. So we are going to alter that. So we are going to paint the top of it red, his little hat red. And then we're going to use gray and white to make him a little beard. And then we're going to use um, a peachy color. This is actually called warm beige it's just a peach color to make his little gnome nose and so we're going to get started on that today and then tomorrow we're going to come back whoo i'm out of breath we're going to come back add a few little details and then we're going to add some glass now we have yeah you are on the page we have a, a couple of options I, i'm going to talk to you about tomorrow for for how to finish it out so what your options are gonna be is to just paint it and finish it out, because I'm the glass girl. Of course I'm gonna have glass on mine, but the option is it's just to paint one neutral and then have um, an element that you can attach that's detachable, like for the seasons, where you could have a heart, a cross, an egg, a Christmas tree, you could just change it out for the seasons that would attach to your gnome if you only want to paint one. Actually, I have like 12 of these, so I'm going to be painting one for every season. <laughs> so you're going to see these a lot in the future, these big old mama jamas. So prepare. So just a little behind the scenes, this board is six foot tall, okay? So I went and bought a six foot tall, 10 inch wide pine board from the Home Depot. It's like, I don't know, 10 bucks or so. And I cut it to a point like a Christmas tree. And what I've done at this point is I measured from the bottom up. I know, a gnome army is true. So from the bottom up two feet, I drew a line. So the top portion is gonna be his hat, and the bottom portion is gonna be his beard and his cute little nose right there. So if you wanted to um, have a separate piece that's wood that's a heart, a heart shape, and I bet Tamara has some of those shapes she could sell you. Uh, a small heart shape or a cross that you could put glass on or just paint or something along those lines, you would just attach that um, I don't know how you would attach it. You could hang it. You could have a little hook. You could do Velcro, whatever. Well, I'll have to look into that. But today, we're just going to do the basics so that I don't uh, have a heart attack. Okay? So, I'm actually going to lower my little gnome onto the base of my easel. And the first thing we're going to do is just paint his hat red. Um, the hip is doing well. I missed several weeks of physical therapy because of the COVID and bedridden, so that didn't help, but I'm back on track. I've been doing, um, uh, I've been back to PT for a couple weeks and um, I feel like I'm doing really well. I'm looking forward to being a normal human being again. So anyway, so I'm just using uh, just craft paint. This is Anita's from Hobby Lobby and it's just red. So we're just going to get the red where I drew my line all the way up to the top. Now I'm gonna back you up a little bit so that maybe <laughs> you can see what I'm doing. I know it's super skinny at the top, isn't it? so that you can kind of see what I'm doing as I go. And then once, <coughs> cannot breathe, once we get down to the bottom, we'll zoom in closer. <laughs> yeah, none of us are normal. Or I haven't been normal, it's probably ever, ever. Most people I know would agree with that. So once we get to the bottom where his face is gonna be, we'll come in a little closer. I just kind of want you to see what I'm doing here. So I'm just gonna put a gob of red on my palette. Ooh, I about made a big old mess. I'm gonna move this over here so that 
I can potentially see what you're doing. And just for time's sake, I'm gonna use this, okay? I think, yes, it's a six foot tall board and I measured from the bottom up two feet. And that's where I drew my line for the hat. So the hat is four feet. It's gonna be so cute, I can't wait to see it. So I'm just gonna start painting my hat and uh, I don't even think I looked at the back of my hair today, so y'all just have to give me some grace on what my hair looks like back there because for the most part, I don't really care. I've been in physical therapy today, laying on the, oh, laying on the table and they've been trying to kill me. So we're just gonna get some red on the hat portion and this is gonna be super cute. Tomorrow we'll add some decorative, oh, you, all you can see is my mid, mid section. Tomorrow we're going to add some decorative elements either some dots or swirls or whew, dots or swirls or some sort of pretty to his hat to make it look better, nice and decorative. But um, if you are wanting one for your porch, um, I wouldn't do this red. Maybe do um, the hat gray or some neutral color so that if if you want to change out for the seasons, then it won't be red. Okay, so we're just gonna keep, whoops, there went my little door thingy, did you hear that? So I'm gonna keep going all the way down. This is probably gonna need multiple doors. Well, good heavens, I keep hitting that door thingy. This is gonna be so cute, guys. And they distress his hat tomorrow before we do some little decorative part just and show a little bit of that green coming through. I think that'd be super cool. All right, let's see. I'm going to go back up and just, oh, very slowly and just hit it again. Make sure it's got some good coverage. Slowly sit down. Hey, Susan. Hey, Jamie. Hello. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise this up because for the most part, you can see that the hat is done. It's red. That was super fast and super easy. So I'm going to raise him up. Hope he doesn't hit my ceiling. And, oh, he's like an inch from the ceiling. And then I'm gonna bring you guys in closer so you can see what I'm doing. I do feel better, you know? I think sometimes, even though I get out of breath real easy and I don't have the energy level that I normally do, just, just coming on here and hanging out with you guys for 30 or 45 minutes, I think is gonna help me. It's like my, it's like my going to the doctor. It's gonna help me heal faster, I think, so. Hey, Miss Brandy, how are you? So I am going to try to get you guys a smidge closer in so you can see what I'm doing. I don't know if you can see right here where, <coughs> Ooh, hang on guys, I need to breathe for two seconds. Right here, two feet up from the bottom, I drew a line across, okay? Then I just drew a little oval for his nose. So I'm gonna finish out the red all the way down to my line, and then we'll start on the bottom. Whew, maybe if I stop talking for 10 seconds, I can breathe. It's amazing to me how much talking takes your breath away. Maybe it's because I talk too much. <laughs> I don't know. Could that be it? <laughs> Could that possibly be true? No way, Jose. All right, so let's hit the other side of this line. And then we'll, I think I'll get a smaller brush real quick just to 
Go around his nose. There's the top of his cute little nose. My hands are shaking too for some silly reason. Tell you what, I hope none of you guys out there get the COVID because it is a doozy. It about took me out. I literally thought I was a goner. That stuff is not good. Okay, so there, we've covered up the green with our red. It doesn't look fantastic. <laughs> I did eat and drink water. Um, it is not fantastic, but we're going with it because that's how we're gonna roll today. We'll fix what we need to fix when it's time to fix it. Okay, so real quick, I am going to use gray. I think I'm gonna paint the whole bottom section with the gray, which is just same thing, Anita's Cheapo Craft Paint. I think this was $2.99 for this big eight ounce bottle. So, and it is called Rainy Day. So we are going, whew, we're gonna paint, gonna use another one of these because it goes super fast. Let's see if I can lower this to, uh, hang on, where you can see the bottom. There we go. So I'm gonna paint over this green with the gray, and then we'll come back and add white uh, highlights for his little beard. So this is just that old crafty Anita's paint. Ooh, I have to stop talking a second. So tomorrow, the reason I'm doing, I, I know y'all are thinking, what is she doing live at 4.30 in the afternoon? Because uh, normally I'm an, a late night, night live girl, 7, 8 o'clock at night, but y'all, by then, <laughs> you're welcome, Tracy. By then, it, yeah, it kind of does on camera, Catherine, but it's not. It's gray. Uh, it, and I think next to the green really makes it look blue. But um, the reason I'm live at uh, 4.30 instead of 8 is because, let me just tell you guys, by 8 o'clock, normally, <laughs> normally I go to bed at like 2 a.m. I'm that girl who works until, you know, 1 or 2 a.m. and then hits the hay and sleeps late and then gets started again. But since I had the COVID, I, all I do is sleep. <laughs> I can't stay up. And so if I came on live at 8 o'clock right now, I'd probably die. It would kill me. I'm going to raise this. No, I don't think I can. It's kind of wobbly. Hang on. Yeah, by 8 o'clock, I'm used up. So I'm going to try to squeeze in some, a few earlier lives for Valentine's and spring and Easter until I can get enough strength and energy back to actually go live at the time I like to go live. Let me see. I'm gonna bring my gray up around his nose. I know, I'm trying to take it easy, but I've never been really good at that. Ooh, well, that's a pretty good job for shaky hands. Try not to get in your way. So tomorrow, around the same time, maybe a little later, um, I'll, I'll post around lunchtime and let you know what time we'll be live tomorrow to finish this out.
because tomorrow we're going to add some details and um, talk about how to hang a separate piece here if you want to paint yours neutral. And I'm going to add, because mine, I'm going to do one for every season. Mine is going to be a Valentine, so I'm going to do my heart directly on my board. I'm going to slap another quick coat of the gray. Yes, whoever asked, Jenny, yes, anytime I do a video on this page, you can come back and watch the replay at your convenience anytime you'd like. Just click when you come to the Art Shattered page, just click on the tab that says videos and you can scroll through and find the video that you want. You know what, Lori? I didn't lose taste or smell specifically, but what happened is that nothing tastes good. It's like, I'm a Chick-fil-A sandwich addict. I love Chick-fil-A sandwiches. And while, at the point where I was starting to feel better, one of my friends brought me a Chick-fil-A sandwich and it tasted like rubber. I don't know. It tasted funny and I haven't been able to quite get the desire to eat a Chick-fil-A sandwich since. So, I don't know. Maybe that's losing my taste. But I still can taste like certain things. Um, but nothing tastes exactly like it should. And that's, that and the fact that I didn't get out of bed for 12 days uh, contributed to a ton of of weight loss for me, that not eating, being sick, but that is not, whoops, that's not the proper way to diet. Would not recommend that diet. All right, so now we're gonna fix up his nose real quick. I wanna make sure some of this gray, that uh, green's not showing through there. All right, let's see. My nose is tickly. So let me find my brush. That red is killing my water. So I'm gonna paint his nose just with this um, peachy color. It's kind of a skin tone. It's called Warm Beige by Americana, but really any peachy skin tone color would work. You don't necessarily have to use this one. Oh, yeah, you know you're sick when you don't eat your favorite food. I can get the top off. Ugh. Okay. Ouch. I pretty much didn't eat anything for a long time. Jello. I ate Jello. And I ate soup, which I probably may never eat again. If I have to eat soup anytime soon, I'm probably gonna die. That, I just cannot even think about stomaching um, a bowl of soup right now. Can't do it, not happening. Okay, so with this warm beige, which I got way too much, I'm just gonna paint his nose out. It's gonna need more than one coat because that green is super strong. Try not to get paint on my britches. Glad to see you here, April. Oh, Sandy, girl, if you haven't been to the doctor, if you just got a diagnosis and you haven't been to the doctor, I would encourage you to go to the doctor if you're having symptoms. Here's what happened to me. I started feeling bad and I went ahead and took the rapid test just at the health department down the street from me. I was diagnosed positive. So I just stayed home and, you know, start, was trying to take care of myself. I, I was just like, you know, self-medicating, you know, just taking uh, Tylenol and 
cough medicine and whatever. And I almost killed myself by doing that. So if you have symptoms, I would encourage you to just call the doctor, get it over with. Don't think you're gonna fight this by yourself if you're having symptoms. Because at about day six or seven, when uh, I really literally thought I was gonna die, my oxygen level was so low and I thought I'm gonna have to go to the hospital. I called the doctor and they called me in prescriptions and within 24 to 48 hours, it was like a miracle. It was like I was a new person. I didn't even, I mean, I felt bad still and you know, still I'm struggling, but yeah, don't lay and suffer. Go to the doctor. Let make them give you something, a Z pack. I had four prescriptions. I have no idea even what they were because um, I was still in crazy land. I know one was for cough, but yeah, I mean, it was tough. Don't mess with that stuff, man. If you wait too long, you just get sicker. You don't get well. Now, my son had it, my mom had it, thanks to me, but uh, they didn't really get sick. Just me, <laughs> just me, okay? So while that, while his cute little nose is still wet, I'm gonna throw a little bit of white on my plates and I'm gonna give his, I'm gonna give his nose some depth. Huh. Let me get that red off. So I put just a little teeny bit of white on my plate and I'm gonna put some white just on the corner of my brush. See how I didn't load it full? I just put a little bit on the corner. And then I blended it on my plate just so it kind of blends into my brush a little. And I'm just gonna take it and make a little highlight right across the top of his nose. That quite, wasn't quite what I wanted, but we'll work with it. So this is gonna give your little nose a little bit of depth. I don't know if you can see that from there. Hang on, I'm messing up everything I'm touching. And we're gonna do the same thing with red on the bottom. I'm just gonna dip my corner into the red. See how it's just on the corner? Then I'm gonna blend it right on my plate. Just run your brush Cross your plate, and then I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of red to the bottom of his nose. And that kind of makes his nose stand out. It makes it really pop and be a little three-dimensional. I think I wanna add a little bit more white to the top. I'm not gonna overthink it too much. And now we're gonna futz with his beard, okay? So his, his hat is red, and we're gonna leave that till tomorrow. Tomorrow we're gonna add some decorative elements to that. Oh, because I'm pretty sure it's gonna need another coat. And then we did the peachy color, warm beige, warm, warm beige to his nose with some red and white highlights. This is our gray. I'm trying to get where you can see. So right now what I'm gonna do is take um, my chip brush and I'm gonna put some white on my palette, which is just Craft Paint Whites. Anita's, I bought by the Catrillion Gallons. This is actually like a 16 ouncer. Um, and we're gonna just futz with his beard and give him some beardage. Beardage. So, brush, white paint. Just gonna dip in, and I'm just going to just start giving a hem. I'll have to manipulate the top. May have to repair some of that red, but I just wanna bring in some of that white, and look, I'm just, bristles. You want some of the gray to show through? Oh! <laughs> I wanna show you something. Can you see my iPad? See the paint on my iPad? <laughs> Things not to do. 
All right, so I'm just going to futz with his beard. Give him some beards, some beard hairs. I should have done this first, but if we mess up his nose, we'll just come back and fix it. Everything's fixable when it's paint. Yeah, we're gonna have to fix his nose. That's okay too. See, this is what happens when you don't do a live for two months. You forget how to do things. That's my, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. I'm gonna go all the way down. That does not look great on camera. It looks a little better in person than it does on that camera. Whoa, Nelly. That's starting to get there. I'm gonna go all the way down. His beard is gonna hang all the way to the bottom. Can you even see the bottom? You can, can't you? I think so. So I'm just using the tips of my bristles. I'm putting the paint just Ill prepared and uh, try to. Is it frozen? Hmm. Mine's still showing. Let me know if it's unfreezed. Huh. Uh-oh, I'm still going. Not sure. Hmm. Is that not annoying? Oh, good. Back. So I'm going, I'm just gonna use a smaller kind of bristly brush in my white. And Kind of fix some of this up here. Just a smaller brush. Where I couldn't really get too terrible close to his nose. I should have done his nose last. So put that in your little notebook. Do the beard first. <laughs> We're gonna touch him up real quick though. All right, so let's touch up his beard. I mean, not his beard, his nose. See how crazy? I'm gonna um, come back and just There we go. We'll add that red back in. So yeah, note to self, do beard first. I'm your guinea pig. <laughs> okay, so let's get a little red and hit that bottom again. That was excessive. 
but I actually think I like it better. Hey, what do you say? Look at that. Okay, I'm gonna do one more thing. Let me rinse this. And I'm gonna add a little bit of a shadow under his nose with burnt umber, dark brown, chocolatey color. And then we're gonna let it dry and come back tomorrow and do a few details on his hat and uh, add some glass to him. So I'm just gonna go in to my brown. I just put a little bit of brown. I'm gonna go in and just get the brown on the corner. Can you see that it's only on the corner? Yes, I'll show you in just a sec. Then I'm going to, on my plate, I'm gonna brush it out. So then I'm gonna come right under his nose. See, I messed that up again. And add just a tiny bit of shadow. Voila, just makes it pop. Okay, this is all we're gonna do today because I'm like already can't hardly breathe. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna back it up a little bit. I know it's hard to see because it's six foot tall. Okay, so his, the top is four foot. This from his beard down, that is two feet. So I'm trying to see what you can see. <laughs> My iPad is covered in paint. So two feet, six foot tall board, two feet up from the top, draw a line, make your little nose, top half, whatever color you want your hat to be, bottom half gray, and then dry brush on the white for his beard, make his cute little nose. Um, I have traced on a cute little heart. Let's see. <laughs> I traced on, I'm trying not to poke a hole in my ceiling. I traced a heart on, let me see if I can lower the camera. I traced a heart on <laughs> just with, uh, I just printed a heart off of the interweb and uh, traced it on with tracing paper, okay? Because I'm a little too wiggly these days for making a nice pretty heart. So I traced this little heart on and we're gonna paint this red and we're gonna add some glass to it. And we're gonna add some swirls and decorative element to his hat to give him a little oomph and fun. So who's ready to get started? Who's ready to get started? Yes, yes, yes. I traced that with a tracing paper and a stylus. I just printed one. Oh, I can't breathe. So yesterday after I went live, it took me about 15 minutes to catch up with my breathing and Rima, God bless her, I've known Rima for like 25 years. So she knows she can say this to me. She was like, stop talking so much <laughs> because she knows that the talking kind of gets me out of breath. So if I'm a little quieter today than normal, that is why, okay? Because the talking really gets me out of breath. And y'all know I'm a talker. I have a hard time shutting up that pie hole. So here's what I'm gonna do. Thank you, Susan. I'm gonna go ahead and point you down and we're gonna start with the heart because we want the heart in his beard to dry while we do our swirls in his hat so that then we can come back and add glass. It is just a pine board, who asked that? Uh, Mopsies, Genie, whoever. Um, it is a pad board, so it's three quarters inch. It's just a one by six, or a one by 10, six foot long, that I cut into a point, like a Christmas tree. It actually was supposed to be a Christmas tree. That just never happened. So, it's just a pad board from Home Depot. So, I'm gonna point you down to, and I may try to get a little closer. Let me see. Whew, gotta get a grip on myself. Ugh. Let me see if I can get us a little bit closer than we are. 
I'm trying to decide if I should move my camera. I'm gonna move it, so close your eyes if you get dizzy easy. Ah! I'm gonna move over here. I think it'll be better. And let's see, there, that's better. We may have to move back when we do the other part, but right now we're just gonna paint that little heart red. Let me move this over here so I can see you guys talking to me. So we're gonna just paint that heart red just using our craft paint from Hobby Lobby. So now I get to sit down. Oh, yay, just walking up the stairs, I have to have a 30 minute break. Thank you, Mara, for the stars. So I'm gonna just use my same old plate and I'm gonna put some red on and we're just gonna paint out this red heart. Now, <clears throat> because Rima wants me to be quieter, I have to talk more. Or I don't really have to, but I, there are things I wanna say. <laughs> so while I'm doing this, I wanna tell you, optional is to paint Mine is Valentine specific, okay? Because I'm gonna put this in the store window of my studio and I'm probably gonna do several. So um, mine is Valentine specific. But if you don't want to change this entire gnome out for every holiday, um, <laughs> that's okay. Uh, if you don't wanna change this out for every holiday, paint his hat like a gray or some neutral color. And then instead of painting and putting the glass directly on your gnome stand up, you can ha get a wood cut out that uh, is shaped like a heart, probably at Hobby Lobby. I know that Tamara Bennett with Southern Adornment sells cutouts as well. So uh, you could get different cutouts in different shapes and just change out the little whatever you put here that he's holding for each holiday. So he could be holding a cross, he could be holding a heart. Hey, Rachel, thank you. He could be holding a heart, a cross, a Christmas tree, an Easter egg, whatever you want, you could just change it out. Just do this in a more neutral color so it doesn't conflict with what your holiday is. I hope I'm back, Rachel. Um, yeah, I've been pretty sick for a while, so I hope that I'm back and things are looking up for me. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started painting this heart because obviously I cannot talk and paint at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. So we're just going to paint this out. And for the heart, I want to tell you guys this too. I'm going to be putting glass and resin on mine because, you know, I'm the glass girl. We can't not do it, right? So, oh, thanks for doing the uh, spread the love thing, guys. I appreciate that. If you have a friend you think would be uh, interested in watching, just share the love and let them know we're here. I said the bad word, didn't I? So, anyway, um, I'm going to be adding glass and resin to mine. Um, red glass is super difficult to find. Okay, because red is a difficult color. Red is made from gold. And in glass, it's really difficult to find uh, that's not just a painted version. Thank you, Elaine. Love you, sister. Uh, oh, thanks for that, Deborah. I appreciate it. I have to lay on my stomach uh, every day for 15 minutes to help stretch my my scar on my leg, and I didn't realize that it would help with the breathing too, but I will definitely do that. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, red glass is super hard to find. It is not impossible. There is some out there, but it's going to be a little more expensive and just um, um, a little more expensive and not the kind of glass that I use consistently. Okay, I like fire glass, which is that clear, tempered, shattered glass. I love the way it looks on art projects. And the um, red glass that you're gonna find is not gonna be that kind of glass. It's just gonna be like rocks, like a uh, busted up aggregate. And uh, I'll show you what I have. So this is what I have. So it's not translucent, it's opaque and it's smaller and it's kind of rock shaped, 
okay? And someone gifted me this red glass or I wouldn't have any at all. But uh, yeah, you can find it. Uh, someone just, Sue said, red dragon glass. Um, but also an alternative, a couple of alternatives if you want red is to tint your glass. You can take clear fire glass and tint it red with spray paint or with tinted. And um, you can, or you can just do what I'm doing, paint your heart and then use clear glass over the top. I'm doing a terrible job. Hopefully the glass will, hopefully the glass will disguise my hot mess I got going on over there. Um, hang on, I gotta hold my mouth right. You know, so yeah, you, you can find red glass. I think um, there are a couple of places you can get it and you can search for it just on eBay or the interweb, but uh, it's just really hard to find and it's not my favorite. So when I want something red, that gum it. When I'm, oh my Lord, I'm just making it worse and worse. When I want something red, I usually just tint it myself with strawberry Tinted. Strawberry's the color. Tinted is the brand. Um, Inga has it, someone said. So Inga, if you want, if you have red glass, uh, if you want, I'm inviting you, if you're still here, to post your link and just say red glass and post your link here because I don't sell it. I don't, you know, I don't know, you know, exactly where you could get it. I usually just search the interweb when I'm looking for something along those lines. But you can tint clear. If you have it, just tint it with spray paint, let it dry really well, and then you can put it on as long as you are doing the resin over the top. Okay, that's a lot of talking. I need a rest. One second, have a sip. Notice I'm drinking water and not the wine. <laughs> No wine. Okay, I really need that to dry. I need to do a second coat, but since I'm using red glass, I'm not gonna worry about a second coat because this glass is opaque and it's not going to allow this to show through. If you're gonna use clear glass or if you've spray painted or tinted clear glass to a red color, make sure that this heart that you painted is nice and opaque so that if anything reflects through, you're not gonna see a really messy paint job down there. So make sure that's nice. I'm not gonna worry about it too much since I know I'm using glass that's gonna be opaque. Okay, I'm gonna move my paint out of the way and I'm gonna scoot this down a wee, hopefully not off the table. Let me scoot, let me scoot my tripod over a little so I can, See what I'm doing. I don't want this falling off the table. So now we're gonna do a little something something to his hat, okay? Uh, first thing I wanna do is I am just gonna take some sandpaper and just lightly distress the edges of his hat and all the way up. So now I gotta stand up, hang on. and allow a tiny bit of that green to come through. I don't even know if you can see, but it's a very light distress. Um, that I'm uh, getting through the paint so you can kind of see the wood on the edges and then really light everywhere else. And then make sure that you, um, clean that off because you don't want to resin over that sanding dust. All right, so now we have a little distress. I'm going to see if I can hold it up a little without killing something to see if you can tell. It doesn't really show, but it, it is lightly <laughs> distressed. You'll just have to trust me on that. So now what I want to do is I'm going to add just some little swirls. Okay, hang on. I gotta breathe because I have some other options for you. I'm gonna breathe while I put some white paint in. And this is just regular craft store from Hobbly Lobbly. 
This is a 16 ounce bottle of Anita's White, $4.99, and I always buy when it's on sale because that's how I roll. I'm my own sale kind of girl. Thank you for the stars, girls. So I'm gonna stop talking for 30 seconds. <laughs> oh my goodness. And I actually think I'm gonna have to have some fresh water because I'm gonna do white and now my water is pink. So let me get a cup. Just put a little bit of my drinking water in here. Mm. And grab my points. What I'm gonna use to do my swirls is a number 10 round point, okay? That's really good for fine. It's almost like a liner brush, but it's fatter and a little bit bigger. Options, okay? I know, hobbly lovely. That's my favorite. Um, options are some form of a stencil, okay? You could use a, a swirly stencil to make your swirls if you're not good at hand swirling. Wow, thank you for the stars. If you're not good at doing this by hand, just um, go check out some of the stencils at the Hops or at Michael's and see if there's something that you would like to randomly place. Actually, you wouldn't even have to do it random. You could do the whole hat. Another thing you could do is get one of those daubers. Do you guys know what a dauber is? It's kind of like a sponge brush, but it's round. So the whole, it's, uh, it has kind of a fat head on it. You dip it in the paint and then you just make a round dot. So you could use something like that. Or, you know, you could even like just put some uh, other elements on here from, you know, heart shapes or whatever you wanted to do from the craft store. I am just going to fly by the seat of my pants because that's my favorite thing to do. I'm going to wet my brush. I want it to be, I know, <laughs> stop talking woman. <laughs> I want my brush to be pretty wet because I want my white to flow nicely. Rima's going to fuss at me. And I am just going to freehand, hopefully not make a mess, a couple of little swirlies. All right, so let's see what happens. Ooh. That one's all right. It's a little, uh, a little bare, so I'm going to come back and just add a little something to it. Kind of fill it in. I don't think it really matters because we're kind of distressed. But we're gonna come in and just add a few of these here and there. Let me wet that some more. Maybe it'll flow better. So this is real simple to do. You can even just do dots, uh, stencils, anything like that. And I don't want them all to be perfect. I want some of them running off the sides. And when I'm doing something like this, I try to make sure that they don't all line up perfectly straight. Like I don't want to do one here, 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 here. I want them kind of random and all over the place. So we're going to go off the board on this one. We'll start here and then we'll go off the side, but then we're going to pick it back up over here like it should have been. You see what I did there? All right, let's do another one. Let's see, I'm gonna get my own hand in my way. Let's see. We're gonna go about here. And I'm just swirling. <laughs> that one's a hot mess, but we don't care. Nothing in life is perfect. God, we all know that now, don't we? All right, I think I'm gonna flip my board. It'll just be easier because this end is heavier and it's going off the table. This end is so skinny, it's lighter. So give me one second while I flip it around so it doesn't fall off the table. There we go. So now I'll be able to push it down where I need to be. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep going and adding swirls wherever I feel like uh, I think they need to be. We're gonna put one like right here. That one went off. 
So we're just going to add a little tail here. All right. Hang on. Let me get a little more water. Hey, Diana, how are you? So a swirl. Then we'll come back and add the tail. And that one's terrible looking, but well, I'm not stressing it. I'm not stressing a lot of things lately. All right, we're going to go off on this one. We're going to pick it back up. Oh, I just, <laughs> I just slung paint on myself. And we're going to pick it back up again. Just like that. Makes it look a little more authentic instead of having all full swirls everywhere. So now we're getting to the skinny part. Thank you, Diana. Thanks, Darlene. And we're gonna do one here. Let's do off the board. And we're getting close to the end. So I'm just gonna do like a hoop. And then we'll do one little hoop here and maybe just a little blip on there. Okay, I'm kind of feeling, looking at it from this way, something's missing. So I'm gonna add a partial swirl kind of down here, maybe. I think we're also, I'm gonna have to flip him back around because this is backwards to me. I'm gonna flip him around again. He's so big. Guys, if you didn't know, he is six foot tall. Y'all know I like a tall gnome. <laughs> I like a tall man. Gnome or not. I gotta fix this one. I moo mooed this one up. All right. All right, so we're gonna do, add a little something, something. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Tanya. And uh, right here, I'm just gonna kind of add like a little bit of a furry blob on some white, like the brim of his hat. Just to have some definition between his hat and his beard. Just give it a little something. Can you see that? Let me get right up to his little nosy. We don't want to have to do that again. Voila. We're getting there. And our heart is just almost dry. He is super cute, guys. Tomorrow, when he's dry, I'll put him out on my porch and let you guys take a peek at him. And look how cute. So I'm gonna start at the bottom. Gray and white for his beard. We got a little red paint for his, for his little heart for Valentine's. Cute little gnome nose. Red craft paint with white swirls. Six foot. Six foot tall. Tall drink of water. Isn't it cute? So cute. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is add our glass and resin to his heart. So I'm going to move some of this stuff out of the way because I can barely do what I got to do. 
with a clean table, much less uh, something that I could spill. Hence me getting paint all over my iPad yesterday. Um, I'm actually, Cynthia, going to leave the back the way it is, or the sides green, because uh, the next one that we do, I am going to do it on the back of here, and it's going to be St. Patrick's Day. So I want to leave the sides green. That's why I distressed it a little bit to show some of the green showing through on his hat. So we're going to leave uh, the sides green, and then... Uh, next week we're going to come back and we're going to do a St. Patty's Day um, no, on the back side of this so he's two-sided. Won't that be fun? So yeah, I'm going to leave that green. I hem hauled about it and, and decided to leave it. Okay, so I have blocks that I'm going to put underneath my gnome so that when we resin doesn't make a mess and run over the sides and stick it to my table okay so he's elevated and we're gonna mostly focus right here because the rest once we get the uh, resin on his heart we're gonna just hand rub the rest of the resin just a very thin coat up <gasps> up into his hat area hang on <laughs> Woo wee all right, so what's under his beard? I'm, I'm not gonna do hands on this one, mostly because my heart is gonna be three dimensional and um, his hands are just gonna get lost. So I'm just gonna leave him. I'm just gonna pretend he's holding his heart like this and his hands are hidden. Use your imagination. No hands, no hands today. Let's see, I'm looking for my glue. Because I want, this is small. This uh, glass that I'm using is kind of small. Where is my glue? And I don't want it flying all over the place, so I want to make a little reservoir or a dam to hold it in. I'm going to have to get up and hobble. Hang on. <laughs> Got to hobble over to the glue station. There is. Don't you hate when that happens? I'm usually better prepared. Glue, where are you? Everything is MIA. All right, hang on. Ugh. It's not easy getting around in the studio either because it's kind of crowded and uh, a little messy right now. If you saw it, you would be like, girl, how do you find anything in there? Um, but it is what it is for now. Um, so I'm going to just run a bead of glue. I know, Shannon, aren't they cute? Yes, June, if I was going to do this piece separate so that I could change it out, I would probably just resin the piece the uh, seasonal piece, and then put a clear coat of polyurethane on both sides of your, um, your gnome itself, and just do the resin on this. Because if you are doing your decorative element separate, there's really, with glass, there's really no need to have the resin. You know, that's a, that's a lot of money. <laughs> and it, there's really no need to have that resin on your gnome. So just poly it if you're gonna do it separate. Okay, so. Uh, Sheila says, if you're putting him outside, should we put something on besides resin? If you're gonna make yours interchangeable, like I just said, polyurethane will be perfect. If you're going to have resin on your whole thing, um, as long as it's not direct sun, uh, like just beating on it all day, it should be fine, okay? Just, um, uh-oh, dag nabbit. <laughs> oh, here it comes. Just needed a little help. So I'm just going to run a tiny bit of glue right along the outside of my heart. And all this is going to help me do is keep my glass where it should be, I think, because this glue didn't want to come out. It kind of acts as a dam. 
to keep my glass in the heart area and not be running all over the place because this glass is a little bit smaller than what I would normally use. So, I hate these bottles. Don't like them. It's still Aileen's clear tacky glue. It's just the bigger bottle. And I usually use these uh, and use a coupon and fill up my other bottles because I don't like this squeezy bottle. Okay, so red glass. We talked about red glass earlier about kind of hard to find. It's not my favorite type of glass because it's uh, more chunky, but we're gonna use it because we need a red heart. Sometimes you gotta have red and you make do. So I am just going to pour my glass and then we'll get it situated. You could alternatively, I said this earlier, but for all you people in the back, um, you could use clear glass as long as your heart is painted uh, red and ha is nice and opaque and looks good because the clear is going to reflect what's underneath. Need a little more. So make sure you do a good job with your heart if you use clear. You can certainly do it because clear glass reflects the background. All right, see all these loosey gooseys. This is why I wanted the glue, to try to avoid that a little bit. We'll get that back in there. Oh, I'm not getting my fingers in glue. good to go. We are about to make some resin. Who's ready to mix resin? Rima, are you still here? You or Catherine to... I'm being really anal for some reason about every little sprinkle, but this is my little cute heart now. I'm going to move this out of the way. And I have my cup and I'm going to make, uh, let's see, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to make three ounces. Three ounces is hard when you're using a cup that really only has ounces uh, even, two, four, six, eight, but I'm going to use the milliliter side, which is over here. So a hundred milliliters, so there's a 50 and a hundred. So 100 milliliters is almost, is a little more than three ounces. I don't think we need more than that. So I'm gonna mix 50 milliliters of resin and 50 milliliters of hardener. And before I do that, I'm gonna glove up. So always use your gloves when you're using resin. If you are prone to break out, Cover your arms. I'm not, and I hate my arms covered. <laughs> and we are gonna mix some resin. All right, so we're gonna mix, I gotta kind of stoop down. I'm gonna mix 50 milliliters of resin, or this is actually the hardener. So, and this is art resin. I use art resin exclusively for my art projects. It is non-VOC. No COV, no BPA, it's made in the good old U.S. of A, and it doesn't have a horrific smell. Okay, so that little dollop that I just poured in with barely looking is exactly 50 milliliters. And you have to measure this, you can't weigh it, guys, because the hardener is denser than the um, resin, so if you try to um, weigh it, you're going to have a hot sticky mess in the end and it's not going to work out well for you. So we'll do 50 of this and we'll stop and let that grow. Uh, Rhonda, it has not. Um, I am still out of breath pretty often, but uh, the resin hasn't really bothered me. 
The first time that I poured resin after I started feeling better, I wore a mask. And if you are feeling bad, I would definitely suggest that you do that. I got a little drippage. I would definitely suggest you wear a, a mask while you resin. It couldn't hurt, uh, but it did not bother my lungs. So, now we're ready to measure or to mix. I have um, about 50, 100 milliliters, 50, 50, 100 milliliters total of resin. So I'm gonna start mixing. This is a three minute process and you wanna stir slow. Okay, uh, whoever's, uh, I think Catherine, you could start timing me. You wanna uh, mix slowly because the faster you mix, the more you are incorporating air into your resin and uh, you don't want all those bubbles, okay? And I'm gonna be super methodical because um, my propane torch is out of propane and I don't, so I'm not even gonna fight the bubbles today. If we have bubbles, we have bubbles. It is what it is. Oh yeah, Rhonda, I know. I had it uh, in December. Uh, I was really, really very, very sick for a very long time. And uh, yeah, I'm still fighting fatigue. And um, a slight cough, I'm sorry, I'm reading at the same time. I'm at uh, fatigue, a cough, and shortness of breath still like excessively. Like all I wanna do is sleep and uh, I'm out of breath all the time. Uh, Diana says, I have some art resin I've had for quite a while. It's turning kind of yellowish. Should I not use it now? Absolutely use it. Uh, my only suggestion would be if it's starting to kind of amber is to use it on something that is not white. So you could use it on an art piece that has a little more color to it and uh, just don't do stark white piece, okay? But you can definitely use it. Yeah, Denise, I, I know, and um, I don't really have any alcohol with me. <laughs> I'm kind of in limbo because I have, um, some things are downstairs, some things are still here in my, in my home studio, some things are in my uh, art studio that I'm trying to get moved into. And um, so I am a hot mess. Hopefully, um, very soon. Oh, oh, did we? Did you lose me for a second? Hopefully, I'll be in my studio soon, and I'll have everything organized. So I don't know. If I could breathe, I could do more stuff. It's hard. Well, I can't walk or breathe. <laughs> so, so hey, Najetta. So yeah, it makes it difficult to do things. And you know, I'm pretty self-sufficient and I'm pretty independent. And it, it, when you can't do for yourself, it's very frustrating. Very, very, did I say very? It's very frustrating when you can't do for yourself. It makes me a little angry. So I'm trying to go slow so I don't incorporate a bunch of bubbles. Looks pretty good. Yeah, I saw that. I looked up and saw that it was on the struggle bus, Colette, and uh, hopefully it was just a second. Are we back? I can't vouch for the interweb these days. Those people are crazy. They're also installing a new internet service in our neighborhood, and they have been jacking things up. They've been busting water mains, all kinds of business. Oh, I know you feel me, Michelle. I know you feel me. Bless your hearts. Hey, Cynthia. Okay, Catherine says stop. So we have mixed our resin for three minutes. Do not, not do that, okay? If you don't mix it or measure it properly, you're gonna end up with a sticky mess and you don't want that after you work so hard to make something so cute. Okay, so we're gonna put our resin on our glass part first. So I'm just gonna use my stick that I'm using to stir. This is a silicone applicator. And so when I'm done, instead of throwing sticks away every time I mix, I just wipe this off with an alcohol wipe 
and I can use it again tomorrow or tonight or whenever it was. Oh, Deborah, that is so sweet. It is difficult, but I have been um, offered help by some really sweet people. So I am, I'm really, it's hard for me to take help, but I've decided that I'm going to allow that help to happen because if I don't, I may never get, I'm just paying rent for nothing. <laughs> I'm just paying rent. Hey, sunshine. I like that, sunshine. We need some sunshine, don't we? Tell you what, it was so cold here today. I was miserable. I hate the cold. Have I mentioned that I hate winter? I shouldn't say I hate winter because we need winter, but you know, not my favorite time of year. Makes me want to hibernate. And it's bad enough, you know, that I got COVID lung and COVID fatigue. It's dreary outside. It's cold. Don't want to go anywhere. Don't want to do anything. It just makes it a hundred times worse. Just want to stay at home, in the bed, in my jammies, under the covers. I am a beach summer girl. Totally. Matter of fact, I am going to the beach next week. It is our semi-annual mastermind with my tribe buddies. And we are going to Destin for a few days to collaborate and enjoy each other's company and just talk about our memberships and our goals and love each other. And I cannot wait to do it. I know it's not going to be warm, but you know what? A cold day at the beach is better than no day at the beach, right? <laughs> I can't wait to see it, Karen. Make sure you post it and show it to us. Oh, Rhonda. Ugh. I don't know how you people live up north. I would die. I really would. I'd never leave the house. <laughs> okay, so our heart is completely covered with resin. So what I'm going to do, as it starts to self-level out, it's starting to, it's starting to bleed out the edges of the heart. So what I'm going to do is just kind of pull that out so there's not a... a a uh, line of resin around my heart, like a thicker line. So I'm gonna pull that out and that will help cover my other parts. This is why we start with the glass. Because if you just start in one section and move up and then you have the glass, you're gonna over pour your resin. You're gonna use too much. It's gonna pull out around your glass surfaces and then you're gonna have waste. You're gonna have made too much resin, poured too much resin. And we all know resin is not the cheapest thing you can buy. It's not cheap, so we don't waste. Get back in there. We don't waste. No wasting. All right, so I think I've got that covered pretty well. So what I'm gonna do now, I have probably about I still have two ounces, so I'm used about one for here, which is kind of what I expected. And uh, I don't know why they're angry faces. Maybe people don't like gnomes. <laughs> I saw, earlier, someone accidentally hit the angry face, so that may that might be it. She accidentally hit it, and then said she accidentally hit it. So it happens. It happens. I, I'm going to use my fingers because. This is too much to use this little tool with. I'm gonna set it over here. Actually, I'm gonna use it to drizzle. And we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna just set it here. And I'm gonna use my hands and I'm gonna just apply a very thin coat. And if it has a few skippies in it, don't stress that. Nothing is perfect. Nothing's ever gonna be perfect. So if you're expecting a perfect or perfect resin, you're really being too hard on yourself. So we're just gonna pull that down, super thin coat, because I don't really want it dripping over my edges because we're gonna do um, another gnome on the backside and then we'll kind of hit those edges just because we're gonna put it outside. 
All right, so I'm gonna pull myself down again without coming off the edge, and we're gonna just keep going. All right, I'm gonna drizzle. We're gonna just keep smearing it in. Don't do this with your bare hand, guys. Do not, do not, do not, do not. You shouldn't uh, be using resin without gloves at all. Not because it's harmful. Look what I did, I smeared white paint. That wasn't quite dry, and you know what? I'm, I don't care. We're just gonna pretend that never happened. Right there, it was still kinda wet, but y'all know me. I'm not getting stressed out about that kind of stuff. This is a, uh, not machine made, it's Cindy made, and ain't nothing Cindy made going to be poifins. I don't even try anymore. When I first when I first started doing resin, it was like I was obsessed because I have that type personality anyway. I want things to be perfect. And I was obsessed with making everything perfect, and you have to give up the ghost on that because it's not going to be. Unless you have the perfect room that's perfectly temperature controlled and perfectly dust free and you perfectly me me mix and measure every little thing and you, hang on, I gotta move my tripod and you, and nobody has perfect conditions that way. Nobody's going to. You're not gonna have a room that is 100% dust free and perfect. I'm gonna actually just turn this so you can see where I'm going <laughs> with, uh, I know Lisa, I, I, had to, I had to learn to stop. I'm trying to see the tip top. I'm gonna get as good as I can. So I'm just gonna keep going up the top. Hang on. I'm gonna move the camera a little, hang on. There. Yeah, nobody has that in reality. Nobody has a perfectly dust-free, temperature controlled, no bugs, no dust, no nothing. So thinking that you're going to have a perfect process, you're just, you know, you're just doing that to yourself and you're just stressing yourself out for no reason because it's just not gonna happen. So give it up, go with the flow, accept the flaws as part of the process, and uh, you'll feel a lot better about your pretties. So I'm going all the way to the top. Oh, this is so cute, guys. The resin really makes it all pop, makes the colors pop. Oh my goodness, so cute. I'm gonna take this off. And we used, I, I don't know, there might be a teaspoon of resin left. So we used uh, about three ounces. Um, if you're new, I would, go, I would suggest going ahead and making the three ounces. And actually I can just put that little bitty bit just on the bottom where I was super thin. Let me pull that out. I know you probably can't see what I'm doing. That's all right. I just added a little more. I didn't want to waste it, so I added a little more to the bottom where I was being super, super thin because I wasn't sure if we were going to have enough. So now that we do, all right, I'm going to take these off very slowly because you don't want to spatter that resin from where you rubbed it in. You don't want to spatter that in your face. That would be ucky. All right, look. Oh my goodness, guys. I'm going to push it back up a little. Look how cute he is. I'm going to see if I can show you the whole thing a little. 
He is so tall. He is so handsome. Look how cute he is. Look at that. Adorable, six foot tall. Cute, cute, cute. <laughs> it's all over my iPad. There's definitely paint everywhere on my iPad. Okay, so I don't have propane, so I am not going to stress about uh, popping any bubbles. Oh, that's a terrible, terrible, <laughs> the lighting is so bad. So um, I'm not gonna stress about bubbles for this. It's going outside. Actually, this one is going in my store window, and so nobody's ever gonna have their nose close up on it. And so we're just gonna let this go.